When you enter Magic Kingdom, you may notice that all of the upper windows on Main Street have several names. Some you may be familiar with, while others might just pique your curiosity. Currently, there are three qualifications to be added to a Main Street window. The honoree must be retiring from Disney, the cast member must have reached a top level of achievement, and finally the Imagineers and management must agree to the layout of the window. There are over 80 different names to look into, however we will be giving some insight into 10 of these honorees. Let's start with Mr. Roy Disney. Roy was Walt's brother and was the co-owner of the Disney Studios. Walt handled the creative side to their business, while Roy was the financial decision maker. He helped secure loans and funding to create the theme parks after doing the same for the animated features they created. After Walt passed away, Roy started to help lead the creative side in building Magic Kingdom. Roy named the land in Florida Walt Disney World after his brother. In the dedication speech for the Magic Kingdom, Roy is quoted, Walt Disney World is a tribute to the philosophy, to the philosophy and, life. and the life of Walter Elias Disney. But we also have Roy to thank for helping Walt bring his visions to life. Roy passed away just a few months after Magic Kingdom's opening. Besides his window on Main Street, he also is remembered in the park with his bench he shares with Minnie Mouse and a train named after him on the Walt Disney World Railroad. Fun fact, in 2016, this locomotive turned 100 years old. Ub Iwerks met Walt in 1919, working in an art studio, and went on to join Walt at Disney Brothers Studio. Ub helped Walt create the refined Mickey Mouse that came from Walt's original sketches. There was a falling out between Walt and Ub until Ub's return to Disney in 1940. Besides creating special effects in Disney films, Ub also worked in Imagineering, known then as W.E.D. Two ride credits are It's a Small World and Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln at Disneyland. Ub's son also has credit on Main Street, and his granddaughter is a filmmaker currently on Disney Plus with The Imagineering Story. Mark Davis grew up drawing as a way to deter bullies in high school. He studied art and started his Disney career in 1935, working on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Because of Davis's well-regarded work on female characters, he was known as a ladies' man. Female characters he animated are Snow White, Cinderella, and Tinkerbell. Mark later helped create concept art and character design for many Disney rides, shows, and animatronics, including my personal favorite, The Haunted Mansion. In 1989, Davis was inducted as a Disney legend. Bob Gurr has always been interested in mechanics. After working for Ford Motor Company, Bob was hired to work at WED by Walt after doing consultations for designing cars for Autopia. Bob helped design the first audio animatronics human figure, Abraham Lincoln, and worked on many more attractions and vehicles in his four decades at Disney. He went on to start his own design company with a few other former Imagineers. Bob Gurr still travels around to discuss his career and has a new book titled Bob Gurr, Legendary Imagineer, Life and Times, Disney and Beyond. Tom Nabb was one of the first children to enter Disneyland on its opening day. At 12 years old, Walt spotted him and had him work at Disneyland the very next day as a newsie and Tom Sawyer on the island of the same name. He went on to manage other attractions and eventually met his wife working at a concession stand. They relocated to Orlando to help oversee construction of and open the Magic Kingdom monorails. After 48 years of working for the Disney company, he was honored with a window on Main Street and named a Disney legend. Mary Blair started her art career at MGM before leaving to work in Disney's animation studio in 1940. Her artwork impressed Walt so much he invited her on a goodwill tour of South America to deflect any Nazi influences. This tour inspired the animators to create Saludos Amigos and the Three Caballeros. She continued to work on animated features with Peter Pan being her last. Walt asked for Blair's help in creating It's a Small World because of her playfulness in her art. She would have several murals around the parks and resorts, like this 90-foot high mural created for the Contemporary Resort for its opening. She is credited in bringing modernism to Disney animation and was named a Disney legend after her death. Owen Pope and his family were the original managers of the Pony Farm, now known as Circle D Coral, and are important to the history of the Disney parks. The Popes were the only residents of Disneyland, with their house being on site. 
Walt Disney discovered the Popes through another Disney legend, Harper Goff, since Walt was interested in ponies for Disneyland. Yale Gracie was a writer and layout artist at Disney Animation Studios, working on films like Pinocchio and Fantasia. He always had a knack for gadgets and creating illusions, which Walt took notice of. This led to creating special effects and lighting within the Disney parks. Gracie used the Pepper's Ghost illusion in the Haunted Mansion for the ghost to appear in the ballroom scene and the flames burning in Pirates of the Caribbean. After some time working at Epcot Center, Gracie retired after 36 years with the company. Less than 10 years later, he was murdered, with his wife by his side, who was injured but survived the attack. To this day, no suspect has been identified. Gracie was named a Disney legend in 1999. Dorothea Redmond studied interior design and art before starting her career in the film industry. She worked on movies like Gone with the Wind and a few Hitchcock films, including Rear Window. Redmond joined WDI in 1964 with her first project being the redesign of Disneyland's Red Wagon Inn restaurant into the Plaza Inn. If you've ever been lucky enough to see the Dream Suite above Pirates of the Caribbean, you'll see her art inside there as well. When construction began on the Magic Kingdom in Florida, she was selected to create the five 15 by 10 foot murals inside of the walkway through Cinderella Castle. These panels are made up of one million pieces of Italian glass, real silver, and 14 karat gold. She retired in 1974 and passed away in 2009, a year after becoming a Disney legend. Tony Baxter grew up in the same county as Disneyland and dreamed of working for the company. He would build models and mock-up rides in his backyard. Baxter worked in the ice cream parlor and worked his way up to being an Imagineer, with his first project being field art director for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea at Walt Disney World. Some rides Tony worked on include Big Thunder Mountain, Star Tours, and Splash Mountain. He was the senior vice president of creative development at Imagineering and was named Disney legend that same year. And that's the theme park history on the Main Street windows, and some of the people credited on them. Got an idea for a future theme park history video? Leave me a comment down below and be sure to like and subscribe for more content.